Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to WEXXV, A New Generation. We are here with WEXXV Heart Progresses. Now, this is going to be our third big show that I've actually had. Uh, predictions up for and everything. I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time. Um, not going to actually write out the stuff and put it in the video. I'm going to save that for the write-ups because it seems a bit excessive and it just kind of makes me talk too much and I'm sure you guys, <laughs> although you, you are watching a video of me talking about it, it's a little bit different. I'm going to use this as a little bit more behind the scenes thing. Um, show you guys what's going on in the actual game and show you what is going on for WEXXV. You get your own little inside preview because I think more people look at the actual dynasty than this. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I'm going to try things a little bit differently. Sorry if the music is too loud. I'm going to try and keep that down a little bit. But here we go. WEXXV Heart Progresses. Oh no, so Ultra Violence debuts, and he gets a poor gimmick. Ugh. That is not good. It's very not good. So, 60 match though. That's pretty friggin' impressive. So, this was a death match, but it was not super super uh, hard on the body. I still have the content risk up really high for this one. And um, Battle Sakata improved in performance skills. Roshi improved in performance skills and ultra violence. So interesting little uh, interesting little opening matchup here. It gets the crowd pretty hot right off the bat. Roshi shown. I don't think I've ever seen that note. Maybe that's a little bit less than was the oh was head and shoulders better. I, just, I guess I just haven't seen it in the road agent reports. But um, so there we go, a barbed wire boards death match, and he they get the win of debuting. This is a team of two Englishmen. I was kind of hoping that they would have uh, chemistry. They did not. Twenty two and thirty seven versus seventy two and fifty six. So man, Roshan's kind of killing it right now. That's pretty cool. I dig that. Second segment of the evening, we got Massive Thunder talking about their matchup in the main event against the Demolition Crew. The team of Taiji Kano and Zeshin Makioka. It doesn't look like any of them are getting better right at the moment. But it got the crowd hotter, so we're gonna have a nice, hot, warmed up crowd already. Third matchup of the evening Tatsukichi Sight Shai Chirobi. Robe, I don't know how you say it, but <laughs> defeated Tornado Nagai in a WEXXV rules matchup in 955 with a charging big boot. They actually have pretty good chemistry against one another. Tornado actually didn't get quite as good of a performance as Tatsukichi, but that's alright. Um, Tatsukichi is improving in technical skills, that's good. Glad to see that. Toyokuni comes out and talks to Tornado Nagai about joining the Righteous. Will he accept the offer? Yes, he does. He accepts the offer and joins them. So now that is a stable of three people. The Righteous, Toyokuni, Tornado Nagai, and Ichi Yumahara now in one group. In a decent matchup, the American Psychos defeated the American Cobras in a WEXXV Rules matchup when Doug Peak defeated Marvel Malloy with a House of Horrors. I have no idea what that move is. I really wish that I did because that sounds really cool. I'm going to have to come up with something creative for that. <laughs> and we have Doug Peak 
improving in performance and Storm also improving in performance. So that's interesting. I'm very glad to see that uh, they're getting better. Storm, Storm is a pretty good worker as it is, and I'm a little bit more interested in Marvel, but that's okay. The Righteous have an interview taunting their opponents tonight, the Blood Brothers champion, the McWades, telling them how they beat them last week and how they want to get those championships around their waist. In a decent matchup, a 51, not bad. The McWade brothers defeated the Righteous in a WEXXV rules matchup. Dallas defeated Toyo Kony by pinfall with a murder on the mountain. The McWade brothers make defense number three of their WEXXV Blood Brothers titles. Toyo Kony was really off his game. Dallas was still injured with the broken ribs from the last show. That lasted a little bit longer than I wanted it to. I booked this show, I guess it lasted two weeks, but I booked it ten days after the last one for reasons I can't that I couldn't disclose when I booked it, but we'll get there. I won't, I won't, I won't spoil it for you just yet, but Dallas still got a performance of 43, which is still better than Ichi. <laughs> and Ichi's really, I don't know, I guess I don't see him as being that bad, but so the McWade brothers retain here tonight. That feud is for sure going to continue going. Toyo Kuni is in the ring talking to, or no, is, uh, okay, he's actually going to be backstage for this segment. He's actually backstage and he's talking to Nariaki Hitomi, who goes on next, on his way back through. He talks to Nariaki, who was in that six-man tag match with them last week, and asks them if he would also like to join the Righteous. In a decent matchup, Nariaki Hitomi defeated Henry Bennett in a WEXXV rules match with a Death Valley driver. I like that that's his finishing move. I don't know why. That's pretty cool. So no real improvements in that one. That's kind of uh, upsetting, but that's okay. So the crowd was very hot. I get some uh, 47 out of 47. And I might as well tell you now, Henry Bennett got signed by Burning Hammer. So he is also leaving. This will be his last matchup in WEXXV. I was hoping for a little bit better. 52 isn't bad. But I was hoping that maybe he would help Hitomi improve. So Hitomi gets the win. After his win, he goes on the microphone directed at Toyo Kuni and tells him basically to F off. Um, he says he wants nothing to do with the righteous. He thinks they are just arrogant and they don't deserve to be or else they would have won the championships this evening. And he just says basically he wants absolutely nothing to do with them. And he wants to make it on his own. In a decent match, Fujio Narahashi defeated Gareth Wayne and Wrecking Machine of the SOB, the Society of Bastards. In a barbed wire cage matchup in 1250, when Kuniyoshi Kawamura defeated Wrecking Machine by pinfall with repeated knee drives. During this matchup, we had Wrecking Machine turn on Wayne. Now, that's what said happened. That's not what's really going to happen. <laughs> um, I just don't feel like pausing this video. Um, I just really don't. There's, there's no point. Uh, I'm not filling anything in. Um, but okay, so basically Wrecking Machine turns on Gareth Wayne, which you might as well know now, and if you watched my last video, you know he is contacted by Burning Hammer. Well, he accepted. And tonight is his last show, and I was going to book him a little bit better than this, but what did he do except for get in a fight, or start picking on the color commentator, of all people, because he's such a tough guy, and... So he, he picked a fight with him, and I find him. He did something in particular that I find him for, and he was un unhappy with that. So Wrecking Machine imp improving in performance. By the way, Bull Wrecker is now Wrecking Machine. That is new. He, as you'll see in the next segment, I have decent plans for him. So 
Fujio carried the match in terms of performance. 53, C-, not bad. I can deal with it. After the matchup, we have a beatdown of the former leader of the SOB. The new leader emerges to be Wrecking Machine. He is moving up the rankings and he wants to make himself a dominant force. He is the youngest, I believe, of the entire SOB. And he is taking the reins with Henry and Doug being his main and then Dallas and Dean, of course, being there as well. So we have a new leader in the SOB, and his name is Raikin Machine. Ryu Kajahara comes down in order to do color commentary for the next matchup on main event of the evening between Massive Thunder and the Demolition Crew, the WEXXV Originals. And about to had great wrestling and good heat. Massive Thunder defeated Demolition Crew with a 79 rating. Excellent chemistry for Zeshin and Taihiji. Once again, um, in-ring performance 68-67 for the Demolition Crew. Shinpei with 73. Shinpei is killing it. Commander with a 65. And I'm just glad to see they all did very well. Shinpei is getting better in technical skills. That feud is going better than I could have ever imagined. So, here is the end of our show. Oh man, I blew it. Just kidding, I don't really care. Um, not getting any matches that were Wild Brawl, Car Crash, or Mayhem. So I forgot to do one of those. I could have put really any of them. I should have put the first one me. That's what I should have done. Um, so yeah, we have that, and that's uh, what happened here, and that's our most recent event. As I said, Gareth Wayne, Henry Bennett, both out. Um, I do have somebody in mind to replace them and potentially be coming into the SOB. We'll see how that works out. Um, I was requested to hire this man before, and we'll see if he can keep his attitude in check long enough to stick around and maybe maybe get some stuff done. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed the show.